Welcome to the next section in the unit. This section is called Parallel Lines and Proportional Parts. You may be wondering, parallel lines and proportional parts of what? Well, the answer to that is a triangle. Parallel lines um, within a triangle, parallel to one side or another of a triangle, carve the triangle up into some proportional parts. One theorem that demonstrates this is called the Triangle Proportionality Theorem. We'll look at it kind of all at once in words and then kind of look at a picture. So don't get bogged down in the words. It's going to be okay. If a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and also intersects the other two sides, which pretty much means the parallel line has to be inside the triangle at some point. then that line will divide the sides that it intersects into segments of proportional length. On this page we still have the theorem written for your reference, but we're going to go through an example to kind of illustrate what all this means. BD here is parallel to CE. Uh, side AB is 8. I'm going to pencil that in. Side BC is 6, and side DE is 7.5. We want to figure out what side AD is. Well, we certainly have, if we, look at the, if we look at our theorem, it says if a line, in this case BD, is parallel to one side of a triangle, which it is, CE, then this line BD is chopping the other two sides of the triangle into, into proportional parts. We can say this segment AB divided by this segment BC has to give the same ratio as this segment on the other side AD over this segment DE. Now if we actually put in the numbers we're given AB is 8, BC is 6, AD we don't know, I'm going to call it X, and DE is 7.5. If you cross multiply, you get 6X equals 8 times 7.5 is 60. So X, which in this case is the side length they're asking us for, is just 10. And you've answered the question. It just so happens that the triangle proportionality theorem has a converse that is true. Now if you're not familiar or if you just forgot what a converse is, it's, it's a pretty simple concept. Um, it basically switches, it switches the if part of a statement with the then part of what we call a conditional statement. So for instance, it, it doesn't even have to be true. Um, you could have something like if it's Thursday, then it's raining, as your original statement, then the converse would be if it's raining, then it's Thursday. And neither one nor the other has to be true all the time to, to be a converse, but the reason that the triangle proportionality theorem is significant is because it actually is true all the time. So let's take a look at what we get by uh, examining the converse of this theorem. So if we were going to find the converse, of this theorem, we would want to take the last part of the statement and bring it to the front, and take the front part of the statement and bring it to the end. As a result, our statement, this could be a little goofy at first, but this would now read as the if, and this would now read as the then. Now it's going to be a little bit goofy because the grammar is poor, but we can work, we can work that out in a second. It basically now says, if a line in a triangle divides the sides of the triangle into segments of proportional length, then the line is parallel to one side of the triangle. Uh, put another way, a little more eloquently, if a line intersects two sides of a triangle and also separates the corresponding sides into segments of proportional length, then the line is parallel to the remaining side of the triangle. Let's see an example of this converse in action. It's still written on the upper right 
part of the page for your reference and convenience. So let's take the information we're given here. We're supposed to show that the sides are parallel. Sides BD and sides CE. So this and this, we're supposed to show are parallel. I'm gonna use my little tilde style parallel sign. Well, the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem tells me that I can do this, I can show these sides are parallel if I can first show that corresponding sides are proportional. In this triangle, the red side 20 corresponds with the red side 28. I'm hoping that that ratio holds true with the blue sides. The blue side of 15 on the left corresponds with the blue side of 21 on the right. If I, I want this to be true, I want my cross products to be equal, then I've shown that this is a true statement. And by showing this is true, I've then shown this is true, which is what I am supposed to do. So let's check the cross products. 20 times 21 is 420. And 28 times 15 is also 420. Therefore, I can say BD is parallel to CE. Another topic in this section worth talking about is the idea of a mid-segment of a triangle. The mid-segment of a triangle, or I should say a mid-segment, is the segment that connects the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. Now I'm going to illustrate that uh, with triangle XYZ here. We need to know the midpoints of each segment. There's triangle XYZ this time with the midpoints highlighted, and I'm also going to name them. Points P, Q, and R. If you connect any two of those three midpoints, P, R, and Q, you would have a mid-segment for the bigger triangle X, Y, Z. So let's draw all three mid-segments in. So the, the segments in red illustrate the mid-segments of triangle X, Y, Z. There's a theorem to go along with this. Brilliantly entitled the Triangle Mid-Segment Theorem. It says a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to one side of the triangle, specifically the one it's not chopping into two equal pieces. Not only that, but the length of the mid-segment is one half the length of the side that it's parallel to. Um, a picture, perhaps. Here's our triangle, x, y, z back. What the triangle mid-segment theorem is saying is that Side PR, this mid-segment is parallel to side XZ and length PR is equal to one-half length XZ. So that is comparing PR with XZ, they're parallel. Furthermore, you could generalize that out to uh, the mid-segment PQ and mid-segment, or uh, the side YZ. So you could say PQ is parallel to YZ and PQ, the mid-segment's length, is one-half the length of YZ. One last set of truths you could make on this theorem. RQ is parallel to yx and mid-segment rq is one-half the length of side yx. All right, on the diagram in this next example, we really should, um, I should have made a note that p, r, and q are midpoints of their respective sides. So what I'm going to do is, if you join me here, in marking up the sides to show that P is therefore the mid, midpoint 
of its side, r is the midpoint of its side, and q is now the midpoint of its side, officially. We can now proceed with the problem as I intended it to be proceeded with. Uh, it says x, y, this length, is 24 units. And we need to draw some conclusions about other parts of the diagram. Now that's very vague, so hey, let's just have fun with it. Um, we could say that, for instance, xp and py, both here, this, this small segment and this small segment, they're congruent and they have to add up to 24, which means they must both individually be 12. That was kind of fun. Uh, we could bust out the whole mid-segment concept and say, well, qr, uh, also has to be, this QR has to be half the length of the side it's parallel to, so we could say, well, hey, QR would also have to be 12 units long. Uh, we could also say side QR, which is a mid-segment, is parallel to side XY. And since we don't really know anything else about the measurements of the other sides, we'll probably have to leave it at that. The triangle mid-segment theorem gives us a corollary. Um, well, a corollary, if you remember, is, is just a statement, a truth, that results directly from another truth. This corollary says if you have three or more parallel lines intersecting two transversals, remember a transversal is just a line that cuts through a couple or more parallel lines. So if you get three of these parallel lines, then the parallel lines cut those transversals into segments of proportional length. A diagram, perhaps. Here we have um, line AX, line BY, and line CZ. They are parallel. Uh, this mark over here, I, just, I use instead of using arrows sometimes, it also means parallel. The two transversals we have here, you could name them a number of ways. We have transversal AB and transversal XY. What this corollary is stating is that if you took uh, the length of AB divided by the length of BC, you would get an equal number as if you took the length of XY and divided it by the length of yz. Now there's a special case here. If the middle parallel line is equidistant from the other two, if it's sand, if, if by were sandwiched, oops, if by were sandwiched right in the middle of this mess, then length ab would be equal to length bc. It won't happen every time, but let's say it does. Well, if that's the case, it only stands to reason that on the other side, length xy would be congruent or equal to length yz. That's a special case. So this, state, this part of the corollary is always true. The ratios will always hold. And then this is true in special cases where AB and BC are congruent. All right, one last example to talk about here. And it comes right, uh, it, this is a, a great application of the, the corollary we just talked about. If AB is 2x minus 4, I'm just going to run that right over here. And BC right below it is x plus 4. And then on the other side, we know xy is 15 and yz is 12 then we should be able to figure out the value of x. Of course, before we can figure out the value of x, we need uh, an equation of some sort. Now we don't know, we don't know that AB is congruent to BC, so we can't just go ahead, in fact, I can promise you they're not. Because if this thing were congruent to that thing, then this would have to be congruent to that. And simply, that ain't the case. So the next best thing to do is set up a proportion using, um, well, you could use corresponding sides if you wanted. You could say 2x minus 4 uh, corresponds on the other side of the diagram with 15. The way that x plus 4 on the left side, the lower left, corresponds with 12, which is on the lower right. 
And then you just cross multiply, make a make a two-step equation and solve it. If, if you've got, the thing is when you cross multiply here, don't uh, fall into the trap. Don't forget to, to distribute. The, the 2x minus 4 gets multiplied by 12, and the x plus 4 gets multiplied by 15. You need to distribute the 12, you need to distribute the 15, or else you'll get wrong answers, unless you're incredibly lucky. So if you distribute the 12 through, you get 24x minus 48 equals 15x plus 60. Subtract 15x from both sides, and you'll get 9x minus 48 equals 60. Add 48, you'll get 9x is 100. 8, 108. There we go. And divide away the 9. Uh, 108 divided by 9 would be 12. That's what they want us to do is figure out what x is. We have done that. We're done. So we'll be looking at some similar problems in the very near future.